Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and in this chemistry video, we're going to have a very brief introduction to the states of matter. Now, you've probably heard about the three main states of matter for a long, long time, solid, liquid, and gas. You're probably familiar with solids. You know that solids have a fixed volume and a fixed shape. That means that if you have a solid object, it's not going to start shape-shifting into something else. And likewise, it has a fixed volume. That means it's not going to be compressed very easily. It's not going to expand very much either. It has, for the most part, a fixed volume and a fixed shape. Now, liquids, on the other hand, do not have a fixed shape. So if you take water, you can pour it into a jug, or you can pour it into a cup, or you can pour it into some other container, and a liquid will take the shape of the container that it happens to be in. So that's one of the nice things about a liquid. You can uh, pour a liquid. A liquid will flow. Now, notice that a liquid does have a fixed volume. If you have 50 milliliters of water, for example, and you pour that into a large jug, the water is still going to have a volume of 50 milliliters. It's not going to somehow expand and fill the, the jug, is it? It doesn't work that way. So it, that liquid still has a fixed volume, even though it does take the shape of its container. Now, gases do not have a fixed volume, and they don't have a fixed shape. So kind of like a liquid, gases will take the shape of their container, but gases will also expand to fill a container. And we can also compress a gas into a smaller container. And so solids, liquids, and gases have different properties whenever we compare the shape and the volumes that they have. Now, why is this the case? Well, it has to do with the way that the molecules are arranged in solids, liquids, and gases. For example, in a solid, we have molecules that are smashed very close to each other. In fact, we would say that most solids have a crystal structure. Um, if you have a true solid, the molecules are just vibrating against each other. They're still moving, but the motion is just vibrational, mainly because the, the molecules, the particles are uh, fixed in place. On the other hand, a liquid will have molecules with more freedom of motion. So if a solid is like this, then a liquid is more like this. The molecules are just far enough apart from each other where they have room to slip and slide around each other. That's why a liquid will flow, because we have a little bit of space in there, so we have uh, a, a liquid's ability to take the, the shape of its container. In a gas, on the other hand, the molecules are very far apart from each other. The molecules are basically moving independently of each other, and they're fairly far apart, like I said. So if a solid is like this, and liquid is like this, a gas is like this. They're very, very far apart. And so uh, that's why it's so easy to compress a gas, that's why a gas will expand to fill a container because the molecules are already very, very far apart. They don't have much to do with each other. And so we have these different uh, ways in which molecules interact with each other. In a solid, they're close to each other. Liquid, usually a little bit farther apart. In a solid, a whole lot farther apart. I hope you learned something from this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button. And if you like what you see on this channel, this is the place for all things high school chemistry, first year chemistry, and AP chemistry. Go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you as a member of my channel. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to learn some more chemistry together.